Hey there, crew. My name is Mark Fig, and I go by Men Who Bullet, and welcome to the Hobbies Hangout Podcast, the podcast where we talk about all things hobbies. Today's topic is talking about one that has been a part of my life for a long time. This isn't just like our previous bullet journal video that we do. We're actually going to be talking about bullet journaling, and is bullet journaling dead? We've seen a decline over the years of interest in the topic itself. However, bulletjournal.com and Bullet Journal, the company, continues to thrive and put new things out. But are as many people bullet journaling as they used to? Today's topic is going to just kind of dive a bit deeper into bullet journal itself, not so much a history of, but talk about some kind of pinnacle timeline pieces, but also take a look at how bullet journaling has trended over the years. And maybe in a few points of this, we can share a little bit about ourselves, even what we were doing at that time, what we were seeing at that time. And were there any major things that just kind of said, nope? I don't want to do this anymore that maybe took this down. Now, I'm filming this very early in the morning. If you see my ears glowing behind me, I've got a very harsh sun pulling over here, but I'm feeling good about it. I've got my coffee today, and I thought, you know what? This is a good time to start this conversation because I'm also, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Spotify with a video, behind me, my notebook shelf is completely empty because I'm actually currently trying to cut my notebook collection in half. <laughs> I have so many notebooks. I'm such a fan of them. I love bullet journaling. I love analog planning and note taking, but I have a whole lot. And so I decided to start doing two things. One, cataloging my collection because I'm a weirdo and I like to do things like that, but also start to really think through what I actually need and what I want to use versus just what I have whole other maybe a podcast about how I did that. If you're interested, let me know in the comments and we'll we'll talk about that later. But let's get into our topic today. I will go on a tangent about it because I'm very excited about my current project. So today I wanted to talk about is bullet journaling dead? So as a person that has been bullet journaling for over six years, who has been a part of the community since 2017, I've seen the ups and I've definitely felt the decline. And I've felt that through just engagement on Instagram and on YouTube. I felt that through the different influencers or big accounts that have fallen off, that has lost interest, or maybe just decided that's not for them anymore or switched gears on it. So let's talk about Bullet Journal itself, not a full history, but a little bit of like how it all started, if you're unfamiliar. So 2013, Ryder Carroll, who's the creator of the Bullet Journal method, he's a product designer, he's working. And he's trying to find ways to overcome issues that he's having with ADHD and productivity and focus and reflection and all of these different things. And he pulled a lot of these different methods and ideas that are out there and he pushed them all into a singular notebook and an analog way to organize and kind of work through something like that for yourself. He builds out the website 2013. You know, he talks about it uh, in a lot of his kind of stories of bullet journaling. Not a whole lot of engagement at first, but then all of us sudden this giant boom because some big tech companies and online um, communities started talking about bulletjournal.com and the method and what it was. And all of a sudden, it just started to pick up and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then in 2014, he decided to start a Kickstarter to kind of help fund building out the website, bulletjournal.com. And also, he was interested in creating his own notebook for this as well, which is the Bullet Journal Edition 1. And he talked about, you know, in the past being big fans of other brands and then eventually getting connected with uh, Loistrom, which is the company that he works with for all of his bullet journals through bulletjournal.com. I have them. Very excited about them, kind of. Early ones, I have, you know, thoughts about the page quality. But anyway, another tangent, another day. <laughs> but he does that, right? And it starts to pick up more interest and people are talking about it. Um, I heard about bullet journaling, I wouldn't say probably right away in 2014, but it might have been, I was trying to think back at what I was doing when I first heard about it. I remember working and I remember my good friend Monique. We were, we were work friends, we worked together in the same group and we had similar interests, especially around planning and organizing and kind of getting our stuff together. And she introduced me to bulletjournal.com and I wanna say it was probably when the Kickstarter was happening. I remember going to a website and I remember reading through the details of how to bullet journal. And I remember reading it and I just was like, this seems really cool and interesting, Monique, but like, 
there's a lot of work that goes into this. You have to have bullets for things. You have to have all these specific pages and flip between them. Like that just feels like a lot of work. I don't, I just don't think it's my thing. And she was always like, Hey, cool. Like we'll find something different for you. And you know, between that time when I first heard about it and when I started in 2017, I was like trying all things. I tried other methods. I tried other planners. I tried using Evernote, which is what I stuck with for a few years before I came to bullet journaling. And then in 2017, I decided that I was going to go into it, right? April 2017 is my month. That's when I started bullet journaling. And between you know, the Kickstarter in 2017, the hype was huge and it was growing. I was looking on Google Trends for the term bullet journal and noticed a huge incline in interest in bullet journaling in 2018. So 2017 was the biggest spike, at least from a Google standpoint of people searching for the term bullet journal. And then 2018 was the top of the top for them. So at that point, the bullet journal book had come out and Ryder was going on book tours talking about it. There, I don't think this was, um, this wasn't really necessarily something that I think caused a bit of the demise or kind of the downward trend of this. But I do know that in the community itself, there was a few comments that were made during the book tour from Ryder or people within that space that talked about how to bullet journal. And a lot of people asked the question, like, what do you think about people that are doing these extra designs using the method? And at that point, and I get it, I really do get it. You know, I think personally, Ryder was like, look, I'm selling this book. I've, you know, built this idea up from an idea of something that I was using into essentially a brand and a method. I want to make sure people understand the basics of bullet journaling before they go ahead and start doing other things. So I think he was kind of like, you know, he was preaching the good word of bullet journal basics and saying, okay, you need to use these things for this to be successful. I know a lot of people in the community don't use an index, for instance. They're like, I don't need that. But if you're following the bullet journal method, truly, and how it is, the index is there for a reason, and it helps you reference other parts of your notebook. And maybe people have tabs or other thing they're using, but like, you know, are you not a bullet journal or if you're not using an index? I don't think that that matters, right? But like, if you are talking about and teaching something, you want to teach it for what it is. And that's what I feel like was happening during that book tour. That's what was happening at the time, especially bulletjournal.com started to put out more blogs. They started to talk about what they were doing more. And I think there was a lot of just like untrust or distrust that happened kind of at that point with people who at that time, 2018 and being a really big year for bullet journal lean as a whole, we're like, wait a second, I've been talking about bullet journaling, I've been sharing my bullet journal, been linking you to writer's website, and you know, been a part of this writing blog post, whatever that might be. And now you're telling me all of a sudden, I'm not bullet journaling, because I like to add stickers or a stamp or make a fancy header. And that turned me off a little bit. Now, again, I use my bullet journal for work, so it's just a part of my day to day. It doesn't change anything for me on what I am or am not sharing online. But I think that that was a little bit of like a mm, not really feeling this type deal, right? So at that point, you know, 2017 to 2019, the book's out, people are talking about it, it's happening. Personally, at that time, I started bullet journaling and sharing things online in 2017. I started sharing a little bit more of my bullet journal content on YouTube in the following year, I want to say 2018, maybe it was, like very early on stuff. I don't even want to look at that stuff sometimes. <laughs> but there was a lot of talk. There was a lot of likes. There was a lot of sharing. There was a lot of just excitement and energy inside the community at that time. But then something changed, and I'm not really quite sure what did, because if you look at like the Google Trends, it went from 2018 looking pretty good, 2000, you know, the end of the year, people were excited. 2019 still had some, but it was like between 2019 and 2020, and a lot between 2020 and 2021, there's a major decline in the Google trend of bullet journaling, people not searching for that anymore or as much. And I don't know in the community itself where the decline was, but we did see a, a major decline in likes. We saw a lot of decline in people talking about it. There didn't feel like to be as much energy around it. And this personally is where I feel like we started to lose a lot of those like OG bullet journal influencers, whether it was due to people who were just not interested in bullet journaling anymore, their life had changed, something had happened, they just weren't posting online anymore. I don't remember the account itself, but I do remember a post that they put out that they were like, look, I'm changing my whole deal. 
I've been bullet journaling for a long time and sharing, but I'm not feeling it anymore. My life is changing. I don't use this method. The community is changing. I'm no longer going to be posting bullet journal content. And they went in a different direction. And for me, I was like, wait a second. Well, I saw this two things. One, I saw this opportunity <laughs> as a creator who's not going anywhere, right? I share this. This isn't my full-time job sharing and podcasting and doing things in a bullet journal. My full-time job is outside of this realm using a bullet journal to do that. So I wasn't worried about it from like, making money standpoint because I have a full-time job and salary. But I was like, wow, like this is kind of crazy. People are starting to fall out of love with bullet journaling. I think mostly it had to do with like the posting schedule and how much they were doing that, which is a whole other conversation thing, whatever. So at that point, right, we start to see the decline from a trends perspective. At that point, I'm still putting out content a lot and I was still seeing some pretty good engagement of it. Still not sure exactly where I fall inside of that realm itself. Self-doubt, imposter syndrome, all the words. But uh, bulletjournal.com doesn't stop, though, at that point. They are still very much around. They are still very much doing a lot of great things within their community. So, right, so they have the book come out 2019. Then in 2000, I'm sorry, 2018, the book comes out, book tour talking about it. Then in 2019 and 2020, between then, bulletjournal.com launches their own kind of private network and education space called Bujo U. And that is interesting because it's a paid space that you can get into. I'm a part of it. I very much like it. I think that it's a great space, the safe space to talk about bullet journaling too. If you've ever been on Reddit, you know, you're on some of the other blogs, even YouTube, there can sometimes be a lot of negativity that is brought up around the community, around what I call bullet journal purists, people who follow the bullet journal method by the book, and their thought that if you don't follow it by the book, you are therefore not a bullet journaler or using the system. And I see that a lot. I see it on comments in my videos, other friends of mine videos that do things a bit differently, Instagram comments, my lord. Like, luckily, it has not been as bad as it was a few years ago. I think it's kind of settled itself out, but we don't see as much of that anymore, but it still does exist. But Bujo, you though is different. You know, in my experience, you ask questions, you talk about how you're using the method. They also have a huge education kind of library and even a course, a basics and beyond course that they put out in 2022. So just last year, it's taking the idea of all the things around bullet journaling. And instead of just putting it out on YouTube, they made a whole course, which I've taken, which I honestly have learned so much about it. I knew the basics. It was the beyond way of using your bullet journal that was really exciting for me but just taking a look at like how that's all worked out and where it is now maybe bullet journaling isn't as exciting or electric as it maybe used to be but it's still around right it's not dead so when I asked myself that question like is bullet journaling dead I don't think that it's dead I just think that it has evolved in a way even you know if I think about myself <laughs> six years ago where I was professionally mentally in my personal life is a lot different than where I am now so maybe the bullet journalers of the past have grown up they started in college and are now in the workforce maybe using or not using the bullet journal method anymore. I think overall, with all things, there's an exciting point of all types of trends. We see them throughout the years in the way people are making movies, in the way that people are dressing, the music we're listening to. There's always ups and down trends that happen, and I think in the planner community, in the planner space, it's just as true. But for the bullet journal community, which is this amazing, rich, you know, creative space, it definitely has had its ups and it's definitely going down in overall interest, but I'm curious to see if it's going to be maybe revived. I don't know what that's going to look like, but really just thinking through it is, you know, what is next for Bullet Journal? So I've been lucky enough to work along with them in the past. I don't say I have insider knowledge necessarily, but, you know, things and questions I've been able to ask Ryder directly in a, you know, a group setting, you know, he talked about, you know, them not being a product company, meaning they don't put out a lot of like notebooks, for instance, right? So like Archer and Olive is a product company that puts out a lot of notebooks every year. I talk about them all the time. I'm a big fan of them. I have most of my collection is their stuff, right? But they're a product company that are putting out notebooks that people are using for a multitude of different things. 
bulletjournal.com is not a product company from like a physical. Yes, they have a notebook, but they only put out a new notebook a year. I mean, if you think about it, when the bullet journal notebook came out in what, 2014, 2015, we didn't get an edition to until what, last year, maybe the year before with some updates. And then they came out with like a blue 22 and now they're doing like colors of the year, but they are not a business of product necessarily. They are a, a business of education, right? It's the idea of bullet journaling. The education of it is really their bread and butter because that's what people are using in these notebooks. They have started to spread out a little bit, right? They have their uh, pen, they have their notebook, they have their um, hand guide. They do have some of those things, but I asked that. We asked that question you know, to them, the community as a part of this and said like, what are you doing? Like, are you putting out a lot of notebooks? What are you doing? And Ryder was very much like, we are not kind of a physical product company. Yes, we have those, but that's not our driver. Our driver is education. Our driver is pushing people to understand the method itself, how to use it, how it can be helpful. How can you reflect and be more mindful of what you're doing so we have, you know, the bullet journal and beyond course. I'd be curious to see if that continues to build itself too until whatever's next. You know, maybe there is an evolution of bullet journaling, the method itself, that will re-kickstart this community again and get that trend going back on the up. Or maybe it just becomes, you know, I'm going to say flatline. There's always ups and downs, but just um, a part of our lives, I guess you want to say. You know, people who um, use the the method for work or for their life and it's working well and it found kind of a really good kind of mode for it. They don't need these highs of like the new hot thing or whatever is happening. They just need a good notebook and a pen that they trust and the method that has shown them over years that this is helpful for me and they're okay with that. They don't need to switch around too much and then come back to it. I don't really know. You know, I'm not, I wish I was a profession in like trends and had my finger on the pulse of what was happening or could predict these things. But just myself thinking about it, it's been interesting to see how things have started very big and hot and heavy and have just slowly kind of like tapered out but still exists. Bullet journaling is not dead. It will probably, at least in my opinion, always be around but in different forms, whether that be more of what we're seeing now where people are, they're still doing plan with me videos, like showing how they use their journal, but how to design it, which I used to do a lot more of. I'm even switching gears to talk more about how I'm using my journal now, because I think that's the interesting part of bullet journaling, not so much about the decoration and while it's nice and really nice aesthetics, it's there, but I'm noticing myself in a trend. People want to know, how are you using your journal? What methods are you using to be able to be more productive, accomplish the things that you want to. And I think there's also just a general interest to look inside of someone's notebook, which tends to be somewhat of a private thing to say, oh, okay, I see you doing this. And I also see people leaving the bullet journal community or trying other things into other planners like Hobonichi's, for instance, or they're just using different planners to kind of do a similar type thing without it being called the bullet journal method. And I think that may be another reason too, is that people didn't know there was so much. I mean, bullet journaling has opened up so much for me personally, even with hobby and interest. I went from like using a pen and a notebook to having a huge pen collection and a huge notebook collection. I discovered a love for fountain pens through bullet journaling and then using those in my bullet journal. And this has definitely happened for other people too that discovered other planning systems and other planners and other companies through bullet journaling, even though they may not follow the method, they still give you a place or a format to do that in. Maybe the notebook works a little bit differently, or you needed a, a calendar versus creating your calendar. I don't know. I, I would love to hear from you yourself, your experience with bullet journaling, whether you have stuck with it throughout the years, or if you deviated from the method itself, I'd be very curious in learning about what you have tried or where you kind of went with it. So if you're down, I would love to hear from you in the comment sections below of this video or the comment section inside of the podcast uh, channel, whichever you're listening on, your experience with this. And I'll be posting about it on Instagram as well asking the question around your experience with bullet journaling. You can follow me at The Hobbyist Hangout uh, for the podcast or over at Men Who Bullet, which is my main channel for bullet journaling content. And then youtube.com slash men who bullet as well. This is where this will live as a part of also, like I said, the other channels for podcasting that you can comment there too. But just very interested in learning more about how you're using the method. And also curious too, if you feel like bullet journaling is dead or if it's just, like I said, evolved into normal day. That's how we use 
used it. Thanks again so much for listening to today's podcast. And don't forget, you can always support our podcast. If you want, head over to menwhobullet.com slash podcast, and that'll lead you to all of the sites where you can support the channel. And I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for coming to hang out today and talking about some other hobbies. Looking forward to the next one. See you.